Hey, this is Evan from Octane and Electrons. Uh, today we're going to look at the Think Car Think Diag 2. Um, this is a Bluetooth OBD2 scanner, and it's a full function, full future one with uh, two way communication. So you can actually activate uh, functions on the vehicle, which is really cool. So it's not one like some of the small Bluetooth scanners, like you would leave plugged into your OBD port. It's like a fairly large dongle one with a cable. Um, so it's really cool. Works with the app on your mobile phone, Android or iOS. And yeah, look at that out of the way. Comes in a nice case, which I really like. It's great. Like with these tools, they should just put them in a case. Sometimes they don't. And it's like, what are you going to do? You got to keep it in the box or something. Um, so I always love it when they put them in a case like this. Um, you have your user manual, a couple different languages. You do need your, I already use this, so it doesn't matter, but you do need your serial number and activation code to be able to um, register the software on your phone. And that gives you access to five, I think five free vehicle manufacturer softwares. And then you can buy more later. And there may be more available for free too, I'm not sure. I only have a Ford uh, 2007 F-150 that we'll test this on. So here's the unit itself. Um, it's got power, vehicle, and I.O. lights, serial number on it, um, model info. And it just has your serial port in there for the OBD cable, nothing else. Okay, then we have our cable right here, serial port, you can't put it in wrong, and OBD cable. So. I'm going to um, plug this in. We're going to go into my truck and plug it in, and then we'll check it out, and I'm going to uh, show you on my phone how it works. Okay, so we're in my truck, 2007 Ford F-150. We have a unit plugged in down there to the OBD port. You'll see the lights on, power, vehicle, I.O., all the lights are on. Okay, and we have my phone here. I'm going to move this out of the way because it doesn't do anything interesting once you're using it. Okay, so I have my phone here, so I'll do my best to show you from here. Now, the software on Android, like I have, is called Think Diag Plus, and um, it's called something else, Think Diag or something on iOS, and the instructions tell you. And so you have to download the app on a phone. I could not get it to work on my tablet, so I'm having to use the video, the camera on my tablet, and I could not get it to work on my Android head unit in the truck either. Um, so it seems to only want to work on a phone device, which is okay. Um, and so you install it, you need to register an account, register an email address and password, and then you will it'll prompt you for it, but you'll have to select what device you have and enter the serial number and activation code, okay? Then it'll give you five free software downloads for different makes. And I have tested in the past their Think Diag Mini, which is a little Bluetooth scanner you can leave plugged in that's not really full-featured. Um, so I have that in my account too. Okay, so one thing, I had a problem with this. It would connect to Bluetooth easily every time, um, but it would just like hang when I tried to do a, a scan or a diagnosis. And it did that over and over again. I finally saw firmware fix here in the menu. So I'm in like the little account menu and I hit firmware fix and then think Diag 2 firmware fix. And it just hits, you hit okay. It will download a firmware update, update the device. And then I restarted everything and it works perfectly. So if you are having trouble, make sure you do that. Okay. If you're, I think the other features in here, there's service and help and online support. There's a chat thing where you can post problems and talk to people, uh, like a forum. And then there's the store icon where you can download um, software. So I don't need any others. I don't have any other cars to use it with that are newer um, that even have OBD2. But I've downloaded the Ford software right there. And you just basically tap on it. If it, you don't have it yet, you'll hit download on the screen. And... That's it. If you hit diagnose down here at the bottom, it'll start that software up and that's where you can download all of them. Okay. Or you can be on the main screen, which is a little engine icon. All right. So I think if I start a diagnostic, it'll connect anyways, but up at the top here, you'll see that Bluetooth icon. I'm going to tap that and you'll see it Bluetooth connected. So it's connected to the scanner. Okay. If you did have multiple devices in your account, like I do, you would have to go to the menu and go to my device and make sure you select the one you're trying to connect to, which is Diag2. 
Okay. So, this is really, I think, how it's meant to be used is start at all systems diagnostic. Okay. And VIN decoding. Get that out of the way. Okay. So, it'll go out and automatically scan your vehicle, pick up from the VIN number, and then determine make and model and year and all that. And you see diagnostic has now started, so it has a diagnostic session running. And I think it saves this in the history and will save logs and stuff, which is really nice. So, let's see. Read VIN. Oh, sorry. It also helps that you turn your key on. I didn't do that. <laughs> Make sure you turn your key to the on position so your dashboard uh, or everything's on. Should work fine now. Okay. Okay. It's a Ford. 2007 Ford, perfect. All right, turn ignition switch on, it is. It's gonna scan the vehicle, then it'll take us to the module screen where it should show its report of testing all the vehicle modules. Perfect. Okay, so we'll start the start. Health reports. It's gonna go through and scan the truck for all the different control modules on it and see if there's any fault codes reported. Um, <clears throat> this truck is an 07, but it has like 34,000 miles on it. It's in excellent shape and it has no problems and no fault codes to read. So I already know we're not gonna see anything here. But that's okay. Okay, so all are normal. There's none in a, a failure category, but we can tap on them individually and go into the module. And we could see module information, which I think will give you the serial number. Yeah, software number. Read fault codes. We don't have any. Oops. Retrieve codes. Self-demand test, we don't need to do any of those. Clear memory, read data stream, and actuation test. So when you're in an actual module screen, you can go to actuation test and you can actually initiate tests of different functions of the module. So this is what's really useful about a scanner like this, is if you're trying to troubleshoot something, you can activate the electronics or um, that solenoid or whatever to see if it works correctly. So. I'm parked. I'm not going to mess with any of the four-wheel drive stuff right now, but um, that's pretty cool. Con uh, transfer case shifting, integrated wheel end solenoid is the the IWE, the uh, locking hubs for the Ford four-wheel drive. So very cool. We'll look at one that we can do here while we're parked. Uh, so here, driver's seat module. We already know there's no codes, but let's see what we can activate. Actuation test. Okay. So let's see. Pedals forward. So if I tap that. And I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm watching it. That is actually moving my adjustable pedals. Oops, sorry. And it just does a short trigger of the motor. So it doesn't, you know, keep them running. But that lets you trigger that function and then see that the uh, motor or whatever you're trying to test is working correctly. Let's do my seat controls. So front motor down. Okay. 
and well, some conditions have not been met. Hmm. Okay, not sure. Let's see, horizontal motor forward. And that just moved my seat forward. And that's great. So you can use that to test those functions and see if they're, uh, the actual motor or controller is working correctly. And being able to activate it from here is great to tell if you have a problem with the switch or if the problem's in the module. Okay. Um, another one I was looking at is instrument cluster. You can activate the individual or all of the warning lights on your dash. So in module information, we know there's no codes. Data stream. I don't think, let's see, I'm not sure what there is to read. Oh, you can select different things. Okay, let's see. Uh, battery voltage, okay. Oh, nice, so add that to a report and we can record it as well. That's great. Okay, actuation test. And let's do all warning lamps. And I'm gonna hit on. Now if I go over to the dash, we have all the warning lamps on so you can see that they're working correctly and I'll turn them off. Back on, off. So really cool function of the software if you're trying to troubleshoot individual things that might be a problem. So here's one I was looking at, tachometer. Peg the tachometer at 7K, off, on, off. So you can check gauge function and control it from here. So again, really cool. The two-way functionality is just awesome for trying to troubleshoot lots of little things that might annoy you, especially on a vehicle that's a little bit older like this one. All right, very cool. Oops, I don't want to end. Okay, so now we're back at the screen of our main uh, functions. Let it load all the vehicle data. Okay. We already looked at health reports. System scan, I think does the same thing basically. Or, well, I guess not, because the, the auto scan Health report scanned for codes through all the modules. I suppose this pulls the entire system to see what modules are equipped. And we'll see, can we still go into an individual? Okay, and so from there we can still go into an individual module. So I guess the difference in system scan is to see what modules are there in the system, but it doesn't give you an overview. And health report goes through scans all the modules and will give you an overview of fault reports or fault codes that are present seems to be the difference in the two okay let's go back system selection lets you select from all of those individual modules um, one by one and then we'll be back at the screen where we can control them individually okay so multiple ways to get to the same function functionality depending on how you want to do it. Common functions, these are OBD functions that are part of the standard. So the you know oil reset, uh, ABS and brake bleeding, electronic throttle relearn. This truck I don't think does most of those things other than ABS bleed, which I've used before on other scanners. It's very useful. Um, but like we'll look at oil reset, but this truck doesn't have an oil monitor. I suspect it'll have an error. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna cancel because I don't think this does anything on this truck. Okay, common functions. Module programming. Programmable module installation. So it looks like this will let you replace, if you replaced ABS or driver seat module instrument cluster and I suppose program it back to the ECM on the truck, set new parameters, 
Yeah, so I'm not going to do that. But that's good to know if you ever had to replace any of those. And vehicle info, which we already know. And then we would exit our session. Okay, that's system diagnostics. Here's repair and maintenance functions. So these are a lot of uh, different maintenance stuff that's part of OBD2. Um, this truck, again, doesn't really support any of this stuff being fairly old. But DPF for diesels, I recognize ABS bleed, which this truck does do. But it's a whole process to go through, so we're not going to go through that. Brake, probably brake life warning maybe. EGR, injectors, oil, probably oil warning. TPMS, so again, I can't really do much on this. OBD2 fun or OBD functions. So we'll see, I think this takes you into, we were in the like Ford specific stuff. Um, OBD probably takes you into the basic OBD functions that like the cheaper uh, basic OBD scanners will have. So let's check. Good, so it auto scans different protocols. Okay, good. So that'll tell us the MIL, what do they call that? Multi-function indicator, like the check engine light is off. No trouble codes. Readiness flags are set for emissions. Readiness are not supported. Data stream items are supported. But protocol, one readiness not completed. Let's tap on that. I wonder what that is. Oh. I guess we can't do it from here. Okay, let's say enter. Yeah, so these are the basic functions that a, a scanner will do to tell you if you're ready for emissions testing or it has check engine trouble codes. Let's see. Ready status of current period. Not complete. Comprehensive component fuel system monitor not complete wonder report uploading report oh that's cool so you can actually dump out a PDF report uh, from the software so that's great right on okay that's the main functions there I'm in the session. You can see what reports were generated that I just did. And they'll be uploaded to your online account with them too, which is really cool. That's great. And history, we can see different times I've connected and used it. So that's it. I hope you like it. That's the Think Car. Um, uh, think Diag 2 module and it works well it's a full function scanner nice to have it in your phone so you don't have to be sitting right here I mean I kind of have to to show you but you could do it remotely you know outside of the vehicle to trigger different functions and see if they work if you're working on the four-wheel drive system or whatever so very useful scanner good software it takes a little bit to get it uh, you know your account set up and update the firmware and all that but it works great um, really easy to use. The software is fast, so that's nice. You don't have to wait for every time you press a button on there. So yeah, I'd highly recommend it. It's a great scanner and works very well. So I um, hope you like it and hope it helps you. Thanks.